first half result yesterday. I mean, let, let's just talk sort of high level, I suppose, on APA first, right? 90% of its earnings come from its gas infrastructure portfolio. The remainder comes from electricity transmission, remote power generation and, and gas-fired power generation. So, look, APA yesterday quite rightly promoted um, the importance of gas generation in the energy mix in a world where coal-fired power generation is being retired and it's been retired faster than what was originally expected. That's being replaced with intermittent uh, renewable generation, so solar, wind. As we know, that is variable uh, uh, power generation. So when the uh, sun's not shining and the wind's not blowing, all of a sudden you've got a deficit in your wind generation, in your um, power generation. And they quite rightly point out just how important gas-fired power generation is um, within that mix and will become more important as more renewables comes into the mix. It also highlights um, how important gas is for particular industrial purposes and for residential. Um, so that's their, their core. And, um, we've got to also think about where they want to expand to. And they're uh, very much in pursuit of electricity transmission and remote renewable generation opportunities. Um, this is a massive opportunity uh, set for them. But this is an area where there are long lead times between idea to construction and into first earnings. And sometimes those earnings even take time to ramp up over time. And there's a lot of capital that wants to get into this space. So to me, it's likely that returns in this area are likely going to be less than in their uh, gas infrastructure business because they're lower risk. They don't have issues with asset life. And APA doesn't have an existing network of assets which it can leverage off, or at least it didn't until it bought the Alinta Pilbara assets um, uh, that it can now look to actually invest further capital into. In the meantime, its corporate costs are rising fast. Uh, partly that's from an investment in capability so they can actually extend into these new areas. Um, sustaining CapEx is increasing quickly. That's partly because its assets are aging. Then partly because the stuff that it's looking to expand into, the gas-fired power generation, the renewables, et cetera, it's got more moving bits. So it actually has more sustaining CapEx. Um, it's also got foundation CapEx that is increasing in a big way, effectively where they've got to spend to try and bring the business back uh, into like the you know, current world. And two other elements to think of here, cost of capital is rising. So it's not only just their cost of equity with high risk-free rates, but also their cost of debt is rising because um, uh, of the higher interest rates. But also uh, evidence is uh, late last year, they did a, a, um, a debt raising where the margins were a lot more expensive and they brought hybrids into their capital structure for the first time. That's more expensive. And now they're having to balance out um, their returns to investors through uh, the dividends versus having to um, maintain the credit metrics for their credit rating. So they're now starting to have to issue more equity, particularly through like DRP. Um, so it's a, it's a tough uh, path they're having to tread at the moment. There's no change to the distribution guidance. That guidance is for 1.8% growth this year. I really think you're going to get that same level of low growth coming in uh, in future years because they're having to balance that return to investors versus the, the credit rating and the credit metrics required of that. Um, uh, also provided first time EBITDA guidance. Now, they, you know, they used to provide EBITDA guidance all the time. They took it away. I think that was a mistake. They've actually brought it back. That's implying nine to ten percent growth for FY24. A lot of that is being fueled by um, both the BassLink acquisition as well as the Alinta acquisition. In fact, if you take out the contribution that's going to come from Alinta in the second half then the second the guidance is actually implying somewhere between a 1% and 5% decline in earnings in the second half of the business. Um, so negative growth in that second half. So look, overall, when I look at it, um, I feed it all through my numbers, I think uh, valuation declines because those higher costs and weaker earnings. Uh, now it's $7.48, stock closed at $8.26. Uh, why I wouldn't be more aggressive on selling um, with I've got the whole rating on it. If I look um, over time, like the distribution yield is still pretty strong. We're looking at sort of 6.8% and should grow a little bit over time. So your IRR over a five-year hold is probably more like in this sort of 6% type range. So it's not, you know, uh, dump it, but it's uh, certainly not going to be uh, strong sort of returns in my mind um, over a sort of a five-year hold period. Hence the hold rating. <music>